And I like this story about uh, the Buddha. Uh, a Brahmin priest saw the Buddha resting under a tree in meditation. And the Brahmin was impressed with the Buddha's way. And he asked, are you a god? And Buddha said, no, Brahman, I am not a god. Are you an angel? No, replied the Buddha. You must be a spirit then. No, I'm not a spirit, said the Buddha. Then what are you? I'm awake. So being awake, being aware, a dear friend of mine says there's no substitute for awareness, and that's what we want to do. We want to be aware of sound everywhere in our environment. And most cultures share myths of creation of some sonorous event. And many of you who are familiar with the Bible, in the beginning was the Word using fluid mediums and electronic amplification of sound. Yeni coined the term cymatics from the Greek for wave for this branch of study. Today Alexander Lauterwasser is building on the work of his predecessors employing modern sound and recording equipment. He has custom-built devices which allow him to stimulate various materials, such as sand or water, with sound vibrations whose frequencies can be precisely controlled. And God said, let there be a movement in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the movement, and divided the waters which were under the movement from the waters which were above the movement. And it was so. Since the 1960s, scientists have suspected that frozen water could survive in permanently shadowed craters at the moon's poles. Again, coming in from the upper right, there's the first wave. This may be the best view. I've brightened it quite a bit. And there is the second wave. You're going to like it. Now, this block for the ceiling, right? Yes. The plafond? Yeah, of course. Oui. Oui. Color the blue for the ciel, for the sky, right? And there are stars here. You see them? Right yes, there. There's yes, a little yes. circle, and it radiates out. Oui, have a lot of stars. Yes, all over the block. Oui, have a so lot of stars. Yes. yes, all over the block. So this was the ceiling block. Yeni coined the term cymatics from the Greek for wave for this branch of study.
Sound in today's uh, medicine uh, is not new. Uh, in uh, Smithsonian Magazine in 2004, there is a, uh, a scientist at UCLA, Jim Jimzuski, and he termed the branch of study that was hearing the cell as sonocytology. And just a few years later, we have out of the University of Missouri, a biological engineering team that created a photoacoustic device and they can hear as few as 10 melanoma cells in a blood sample. And uh, at Duke University, uh, just the past couple of years, we have uh, Kathy Nightingale, who's the Associate Professor of Biological Engineering, is detecting disease with sound. And she talks about in her research that the muscles have an own, their own particular sound, the, uh, you know, blood, the, every part of the body has its own song. And using sound therapeutically and diagnostically in today's medicine is becoming very popular. Uh, we've heard of diagnostic ultrasound. Uh, we have mothers that uh, is the most popular one that uh, people think of. Uh, young mothers getting uh, ultrasounds of their uh, the babies in the womb. Uh, we also use ultrasound for pain relief and to um, remove tumors. Uh, something called lithotripsy, which pulverizes kidney and gallstone. And if you think about everything that we have in nature, we have so many things that represent five. And um, these flowers are, are uh, just a couple of them that uh, you can see. And then I think this is really amazing of our DNA. Our DNA reveals a cross-section of 10 decagon sets. So it's five, five, we have five even at the, the base pairs of our, our DNA. What we're looking for is to live in this symphonic harmony in our world. Albert Einstein said, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality that you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is physics. <laughs>